Hello and thank you for joining me. Today we are making a simple soup. A soup that you can put together with common grocery store ingredients. And if you can't find exactly what I'm using, you could easily omit those ingredients or substitute them with something else that is available. These are the items I'm using, but again, don't feel pressure to stick to this exact list. That's one of the wonderful things about soup. They are extremely flexible. They can move with the seasons or simply be a final destination for all those loose bits you have floating around in your refrigerator. Honestly, sometimes those random hodgepodge soups are the tastiest. Today I'm cooking on a hot plate in a little cabin in Sweden. So it goes to show you really don't need any special equipment to make something delicious. Speaking of equipment, let me grab what I need from the wash up area at this Airbnb. This is the closest thing to a cutting board I was able to find, so I think I should definitely cut on the unpainted side. And the knife I found is far from ideal, but I will make it work. First thing we need to do is cut up all our vegetables. I'm starting with this rutabaga because it's the toughest. If you haven't had them before, rutabagas are a great, inexpensive, cool weather ingredient. They have a sweet taste and a firm, meaty texture. I'm just slowly but surely cutting the skin off of this one. Then I cut the vegetable into planks, cut those planks into strips, and then cut those strips into nice, chunky dice. This is not the time nor the knife for fine dining cuts. Next I'm going after the carrots. Keeping things simple and slicing them chunky like the rutabaga. These carrots are young so I didn't even bother to peel them, but make sure to give them a good wash beforehand. I saw a parsnip at the grocery store and grabbed it. They look kind of like white carrots. I just split mine in half lengthwise and then slice it into half moon shapes. I grew up not liking onions, but now I can't imagine a soup without them. I just peel that onion, split it in half along the poles, and then dice it. A fairly large dice at that. And last but not least, I'll mince up a little garlic. Now all the hard work is done and it's time to put it all together. I turn on my hot plate and add a bit of butter. <laughs> it looks like it needs a little more time to heat up. At home with a regular stove you can just use a medium high heat. Once the butter is foaming and sputtering, I go in with my rutabaga, carrots, parsnip, and onion. I simply let them saute, stirring occasionally. Once they have cooked down a little bit and are starting to take on some color, it's almost time to add our liquid. But first I want to add our garlic and a little crushed dry chili. This allows the garlic and chili to bloom in the heat, maximizing their aromatic power. Once the garlic has cooked for 20 seconds or so and become very fragrant, I add about 4 to 5 cups of water. If you have some stock, you could also use that. I love using stock in soups, but it's also really nice to remind yourself that even when you only have water, you can still make something really hearty and satisfying. I'm also adding about one third of a cup of canned, or in this case boxed, tomatoes. This is also a good time for a pinch of salt. After the soup has simmered for 15 minutes or so, and my vegetables are tender, I'm also going to add about half a cup or so of pre-cooked beans from a can or box. Notice I haven't drained these beans. A lot of times recipes call for draining all that liquid that is packed with beans. Too much bean liquid is probably not ideal, but a little bit can actually give some nice body to your broth. This is extra nice when you are only using water for your base. The beans are already cooked, so they really just need to be heated through. At this point, we should taste for salt and adjust accordingly. And at the very end, I kill the heat and add a good couple tablespoons of chopped dill. But really, any fresh herb would be nice. I'm also giving the soup a squeeze of lemon for brightness, but you might consider using a splash of a nice vinegar. Soup and bread is very classic, but so is soup and crackers. And here in Sweden, I learned about these great, big, round crackers they make. Very lovely. So let's serve it up. 
I have a nice hot bowl of our vegetable soup and a big piece of those hearty crackers with a great domestic cheese, and I can't resist putting a little extra dill on top. This is a perfect meal for a cold night in a cozy cabin, but really the cabin is not required. Homemade soup like this is great wherever you might find yourself, so get cooking and share a bowl with someone special. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button below the screen. Click to subscribe if you haven't already. Comment if you have any thoughts or concerns. You know, algorithms, etc, etc. Also, full disclosure, because my editor is a busy man with many projects on his plate, I'm learning to edit myself in the interest of bringing you videos on a more regular basis. I'm very new to this software, so please bear with me. If nothing else, it will make us appreciate Brian's work even more. So where is the stop button? Oh, okay, here it is. Thanks again. Cheers.